she was away and then Lynchy came back, she was sick, so she has been out of circulation.
the Scots Church, Sydney. The description of the task in any dictionary is a lifeless formula for a piece of cloth. There are more evocative descriptions and one which introduced an illustrated account of the Highland Plans in 1846 gives a better indication of the significance of the wearing of the tartan. Here are some extracts from that volume. Long has it been known as the striking attire of a warlike Scot <laughs> and the well-adapted dress of a pastoral people. Both hemispheres have witnessed with admiration the exploits of Highlanders while their social and domestic manners have commanded respect wherever they have been located. In the army, this national uniform keeps alive in a surprising degree the esprit de corps and the tartan being, as it were, a Highlander's coat armour he is especially careful that it shall in no wise be dishonoured. <coughs> From the time of the Battle of Culloden in 1746 until 1782, the wearing of Scottish dress was prohibited by law. At the time of the repeal of that law, a gentleman with a Gaelic name, the pronunciation of which completely defeats me, but which translates as Fair Duncan of the Songs wrote an ode on the restoration of the dress. And here are some lines from that ode. Now all our hills re echo to sounds of joy, and our men appear in their beloved titans. The clothes that display the strife of colour, in which the carmen prevails. The banner again waves o'er the heads of the valiant. The gale now proudly looks up and appears as becomes him. This is the beginning of Scottish Week in Australia. We welcome to this service Sir Lachlan MacLean of Duart and Morgan, guest of honour in that celebration. The request is made to all members of the Clan MacLean to assemble on the Margaret Street steps after this service so that photographs may be taken. We welcome the Honourable Douglas McClelland, patron of Scottish Week for the Scottish Australian Heritage Council. We welcome clan chiefs and chieftains, armigers of Scotland, high commissioners of clans and clan commissioners. It is our pleasure to have with us two queens of the heather, Kirsty MacLeod, visiting from New Zealand, and Melissa Beatty of Australia. We express our thanks to the junior choir of the Presbyterian Ladies College and to their director, Ms. Fiona Houston, for their contributions to this service. To all who may be visiting today, welcome. Today's service celebrates a significant event for Scottish people. The tartan and the freedom to wear it are symbolic of kinship and civil liberty values which are to be highly prized in any community, values which, in Australia, we are in danger of neglecting or taking for granted. Let us all, therefore, regardless of heritage or affiliation, unite in worship of a God who is Father to us all and whose service is perfect freedom.
Good morning. I think 500 people can do better than that. I've only seen this in photos. Uh, this, this many faces looking back at me on a Sunday morning. Um, it's really wonderful to see. Uh, I, was, I was warned by my session in class that just because I've got a captive audience doesn't mean I need to preach forever. But I thought, well, now that I've got you one, I'll just you know, go from there. It's wonderful to have you. It's wonderful to have all our visitors, to have a choir, to sing so beautifully. It's always lovely to hear children singing Christmas carols, isn't it? Uh, I, think, I think there's something very special about children singing Christmas carols. But it's good for us to come together in a special celebration. Celebration of heritage. Uh, celebration of heritage so much that I have to be my class this morning as well. Uh, some people have been asking me which clan is this. It's a very special clan. One to which only very few members belong. It's the clergy type. <laughs> I think they have to invent their own. They won't really welcome any of the others, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, the concept is to have our own tartan, but to come together. That a tartan is a symbol of so much more. It's a symbol of people coming together to celebrate who they are. But the church is more than that too. The church is the place where all those, regardless of their heritage, can come together and celebrate together. And today, regardless of your heritage, with our visitors who are here from, from all over the world, we do have a congregation from all over the world. It's wonderful to come together to celebrate God. Yes, to acknowledge our heritage. To acknowledge where we're from and to be very proud of that. We also acknowledge that, that together we can be one people. As our, as our national anthem says, advance the strength of faith. And it does look faith on the side. So it's really wonderful to introduce you and to welcome you to this special kind of celebration. And I pray it may be that for each of us as we come to worship God and to give Him thanks for His life and minds. And so as we do that, let's begin then. By singing praise to the Lord. And I first him, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Let's stand and sing <coughs>
celebration and worship together. Let's do so in prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord God, we give you praise that this morning we may come to you and hail you as the King, the Almighty, the King of creation. We give you praise this morning that we may come and celebrate who you are to us. For you are the King. You are the one who we can hold up. You are the one that we can worship and we can bow down to. You are the one in whom we may find our hope and our, celebra and our celebration. We give you thanks too. We praise you that you are the Almighty, that within you all things are possible, that within you we may find our heart's desire, that you are powerful to do that which you have promised, that you have the power to give us salvation. If you have the power to give us new life and new hope. So Lord, we come to you today. We come to you as those who want to hail you as Almighty and as King. We come to you as those who have heard your word to us, to live as those who follow the word of love. We come to you as those who have heard that we need to treat all people in the way we would want to be treated ourselves. We should forgive as you have forgiven us. That we should love as you have loved us. And Lord, as we come before you today, we come before you as those who know that we haven't always done that. That we haven't always been the people who forgave easily and quickly. But often instead we have been those who have harbored grudges, those who have made the vision instead of those who build bridges. We confess that we haven't loved as you have loved us, but instead we have allowed our love to be diluted by this world. We have allowed ourselves to be unfocused by wanting to follow instead after wealth or status or some other man-made concept. So instead of breaking down barriers, we have built them up. Instead of seeking out our similarity, we have emphasized our difference. For all these things, Lord, we would ask your forgiveness. For in all the ways that we have disobeyed you, forgive us, Lord. And restore us again into a newness of life and of celebration with you. Lord God, we believe that your word tells us that if we believe in you and then confess our sin, you are gracious and just and will surely forgive us. And so we claim that forgiveness now through Jesus, our Lord. So instead of guilt, give us peace. Instead of pain, give us joy. Instead of anxiety, give us your life. And truly today may be a day of celebration. A celebration of your being with us and of your forgiveness of us. So we ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
reading is from the Old Testament, from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, the message from verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for under this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land, which I swore under thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but shall mediate therein day and night, <coughs> that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whither shall ever thou go. Here the lesson, praise be to the Lord. So in response then to that reading, in response to us wanting to come and to celebrate God and to know that it's within Him that we may find our hope and our strength. Let's stand together and sing Psalm number 121, I to the hills for them my eyes. <laughs> Upon the sand. And the rain descended, 
and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Thanks be to God. How many of you would call yourself courageous? That's why putting up your hand would be a good sign of that, anyway. <laughs> courageous. When we think of being courageous, what do we think of? That's why we think of, of heroes. In the Bible, we can think of a number of them. Think of David and David and Goliath. We can think of Moses uh, in front of the burning bush or in front of Pharaoh. Uh, we, can, we can think of a number of the Old Testament characters. In fact, we could even think of some of the New Testament ones. We think of, of people like, like Peter and Paul. Paul in front of in front of Caesar or in front of some of the, the, the Roman authorities. Those were courageous men. In fact, in the Bible there are lots of courageous women. Think of Deborah. Aquila, a number of different ones. Oh, well, Priscilla. There's a number of different ones within the Bible. But when we think of ourselves, would you call ourselves courageous? Well, I remember when I was uh, deciding whether or not I was going to become the minister of Scott's church. And uh, I remember one person that I went to go and speak to in the, the presbytery, or local presbytery. He said, so what have you decided? This was in April 1994. And I looked at him sternly, as I do when I'm making sturdy statements, and I said, um, oh, I, think I, I think I'm going to come. You know what his response was? I was expecting something like, God bless you, brother, or, you know, you're obviously hearing the Spirit so carefully, or, you know, I, I wish I was you, or something like that. His response was, you have more courage than me. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure it's about that. You see, we often look at courage as being something heroic, something which has to stand out in the crowd. Well, I don't think that that's what the Bible means when it talks about courage. In the passage that was read from Joshua, Joshua particularly needed a lot of courage where he was, because he literally had big shoes to fill. He was filling the shoes of Moses. And Moses had led the people of Israel out of, out of Egypt, out of exile, across the Red Sea, he had made manifold from heaven, water come out of stones. That's quite an act to follow, isn't it? You know, if we can try and follow that act, well, that's what Joshua had to do. Joshua was the one who came after Moses. Joshua was going to do the next step. It was going to be the next step in the process. And I think God knew how Joshua was feeling at this point. I think God knew that Joshua was also happy that he had something in front of his legs when he was speaking to the people. So in fact, they wouldn't see his knees knocking. Then when they looked at him, they thought that he had all together. But we see in Joshua chapter 1 that God knew his heart. And so what does God do to him? God gives him a new word. God gives him a word of encouragement. What's that word of encouragement? He says to him, be strong. I'm going to use the King James Version. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Well, you see, I think that's what God wants to tell us to. We have lots of words for courage. Uh, I've looked up some of them uh, in the Cory Dictionary. That was really quite an excitement all by itself. But there's one called True Grit. That's an Australian, isn't it? I've never heard that one before I came here. But True Grit. The one we use in South Africa is Guts. You got that one? Yes, you got that one too. Oh, I see. It's obviously it's universal. To have backbone. Yes, to be back. What's this good Scottish one? It isn't a good school. Oh, that's very tricky. You might have a good Scottish <laughs> record. Maybe it's just the wearing of the tartan and the backpacks all by itself. You don't need anything else. But I have courage. Courage for what? When you see, it wasn't just courage for courage's sake. 
It wasn't just courage in order that, that he could stand out among the rest and look like a hero. No, many of us would like that. We would like to be the hero. Be the one who comes and saves the moment. Be the, the knight in the white shining armor. In fact, that's not the courage there. The courage is to keep going. The courage is to keep true to our convictions. The courage is to keep going even when the going gets tough. Unfortunately, we seem to have become a world in society where when the going gets tough, we walk away. When marriage gets too tough, we can just go and have a divorce. When children get too tough, well, we can go and do something with them, put them away somewhere. Maybe politics gets too tough, we just decide not to talk about it. When religion gets too tough, we decide to marginalize it into the back end of our life. See, the bottom line of this passage <coughs> is that when God was speaking to Joshua, he said, be strong and of good courage so that you can keep going, that you can keep doing even when the going gets tough, even when you don't feel like getting up in the morning, even when you've tried and tried and failed each time. To get up and try again. To get up and do again. To get up and be again. That's what he's talking about to Josh. And I've led that up to the passage in Luke. Sorry, again, the passage in Matthew, which I'm going to tonight. But in that passage in Matthew, in the passage in Matthew is a parable that Jesus gives. And I think it's a parable that helps us in understanding how can we be people of courage? I hope that by the end of the sermon, maybe most of you can put up your hand and ask that question. So what can we do? Well, that passage tells us that we need to do two things. The passage in Joshua tells us the three. Let me tell you those. The first one that says is hear the word of Jesus. To hear the word of Jesus. Now, I'm talking mainly to the children here. Do your mothers ever tell you that they told you something and why would you done it? Has that ever happened to you? Yes. Well, then you have mothers just like mine. And you are ears just like mine do. Because my mother used to come up to me all the time and say to me, um, I told you to take up the garbage. And I went, did you? <laughs> yes, you've heard that one before too, have you? Yes. I think we all have. You see, there's a difference between hearing and listening. There's a difference between hearing the words which actually come and then stop in the middle. Rather than the ones that just go straight out the other side, because you know what you watch on TV is much more important. Because the computer game you're playing is just right there at that particular point. See, the adults have the same problems. See, what the adults do is different. They make as if they hear. You see that? Have you ever talked to your parents and they go, yes, 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 yes? And they have no idea what you said. <laughs> You see, that the adults not only do that to children, they do it to each other too. I had this particular friend. He was one of those who could tell any minute story and, you know, thread it out into a couple of hours. And we knew this. And so whenever this person particularly came close, we devised some excuse for getting away. But me, being a bit slower than some of my friends, always made my excuses a little bit late. Which means by that stage, I really launched into the story. Well, what people do then, you see, is they go, uh-huh, uh-huh. What's really happening is behind they're making up their grocery list. <laughs> see, behind, behind, you know, those eyes that you're going, uh-huh. And the person's actually saying, what am I going to do from now? Well, you see, my friend called me out on this once. Because I was doing just that. I was thinking about an essay I was writing. And he was telling me about this particularly important thing to him. At which point he then asked me a question. It's always very tricky when you're listening and someone asks a question. But you see, the way in which you hear is you know it's a question because questions end with a question mark. You know, go, um, and, and you can see the person waiting for something. Well, this was a trick because now you decide what to say. And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question that he asked me was the following. Do you think that the exam we are getting will be one that I will fail? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Never spoke to me again for another month. <laughs> Which I'm not sure was the most mixed blessing. But when you come to this point, my relationship with him went down. But what about our relationship with God when he speaks? When the Bible tells us, love your neighbor as yourself. Does that actually stop in the middle or does it go straight through? When we pray to God and we allow time and space for him to speak to us. And he says to us, go and speak to so and so because they need someone to talk to. Does that stop in the middle? In fact, are we so busy deciding what we're going to ask God that we no longer start at this point for God? We call this the Word of God. And yet, how many times, in fact, is this one of the dustiest books in our, in our, in our bookshelves? I find it amazing that people can read what new idea every week. I would have thought once a month would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose Women's Weekly might have something interesting in it. I've never been game to have a look. <clears throat> How is it that we can seem to read so many things? That we can hear so many things? That we can seem to spend so much, no so little time hearing the Word of God, allowing it to penetrate us, allowing us to stay around for a bit, allowing it to penetrate our lives and our actions and the things that we are, allowing it to change our ideas and our motives. Look at Australia today, we're fighting with each other. Now the politicians are fighting with the churches. As if we haven't been enough fighting with, amongst ourselves. Why? I think fundamentally we forget that our purpose is to hear the Word of God. And the Word of God to us is the things that He promised us. That He promised us that He would be with us. That He promised us that He would love us. That He tells us then to go and love others. That He promises us that when we ask, we will be forgiven. But then tells us to forgive. He tells us that in His sight all are equal. We need to be treated with dignity and respect. I believe the first thing we need, if we are going to be people who are strong and of good courage, is we need to hear them, the Word of God. We need to spend time with it. We need to allow it to get into our souls and our minds. They can change our ideas and motives. But there's a second point. There always is. He says, those who hear my word and sit and do nothing about it. Are like foolish builders. Unfortunately, you see, so many times we hear, but we don't do. And that's the second part of being bold and courageous. You know why people are heroes? What made them heroes? Were they different to you and me? Thinking of Scotland, I went to Edinburgh. A month ago, it was my first time that I stepped on Scottish soil. I didn't get. I went to the castle. And as you go into the Edinburgh Castle, flanking the Edinburgh Castle on each side are two statues. And I was very impressed by both of them. Do you know that? <coughs> Sir Robert the Bruce and Sir William Wallace. You may know Sir William Wallace. He was played by an Australian actor, Ron Gibson. I had a particularly interesting guide there. He told me that, uh, as you will see from that front uh, statue, William Wallace was not a short Australian. <laughs> but a tall Scotsman. The Highlander is that. Well, no, that actually. But the idea with all of this is the understanding that that's, those were heroes. Why? Because they were special? Yes, they were special. But because of what? Genetics? Because of blood? Because of heritage? Because of anything else? No. What, the way they, what made them special was what they had heard, they went and did. That's what makes people of courage. People of courage are those who say, not only do I know what to do, but I'm prepared to go out and do it. That's what takes courage. 
What takes courage is not to be the hero. What takes courage is to live this life that we have here. A life that in the world around us would make us depressed. It takes courage then to still have joy and optimism. In a world where we see so much hatred and pain and killing, it takes courage to say that we can make a difference. In a world where people seem to be fighting each other so much, it takes courage to be somebody who can love, who can care, who is prepared to put out their hand again in friendship, who is prepared to have, show respect to those who do not respect them. To show forgiveness to those who hurt them. That's courage. What does Jesus say about that person? It says the person who is that person. The person who not only hears the word of God, but then goes out and does it. That person is a wise person. And builds his house. Builds his life. Builds his person on rock. When the storms come, when the trials come, when the hatred comes, when the disrespect comes, when all the problems come, it will be those people who stand up and then we count. I think it's fantastic that the titles can come in today. And we can hold them up proudly. What Philip Moore said when he gave the introduction. Instead of wearing the titans, become something that can mobilize, that can move, that can give an esprit de corps to an army. And I've seen the Scottish elements in action. That's quite something to see. Why? Because they're not only here, but they're prepared to go and do it. We need to be people who are bold, who are strong, and of good courage. Let's hear the word of God. And then let's go and do. But there's a third point. This is a good reform sermon. Let's have it. And the third, the third point is the one that comes from Joshua. At the end of Joshua it says this. And remember, I will be with you. I will be with you. How can we be people of courage? How can we go out and do even when we don't feel like it? How can we go out and do even when we've tried and tried and failed? The way we do is because we know that Christ is with us. That God is with us. That God will empower as we listen to His Word and as we decide to go and do. It's different to us. We promise each other that, but I'm always sure we mean it. An example from my life is I'm one of these people who can't swim. I'm not sure there are many of us around, particularly those who've been sailors who can't swim. It's very tricky. But the idea was that I was taught by this particular. I think it's likely a statistic uh, swimming teacher. Because I remember one time I was paddling happily uh, in, the, in a baby pool and said, Come, I will hold you. Have you heard those words? <laughs> I will hold you. Anyway, we went into the big pool and they were holding. And all of a sudden I realized he was no longer holding. I think at that point I swallowed <coughs> the pool. One of the reasons why I still don't swim. The Bible tells us that that's not true. It's not true in terms of Jesus. Not true, it's true in terms of God. Because in terms of God, He says, I will always be with you. When you hear my word and decide to go out and do it, to go out and live it in this world, in this country, I will be with you. I will help you. I will strengthen you and empower you and give you courage to be different, and the courage to make a difference. I pray that as a nation, we may do just that, and that we may learn from Joshua and from Jesus, that through them we may be people who are strong and of good courage. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we would ask for your help. For this world would seem to rob us of our courage. Would seem to rob us of our excitement. And we would ask, Lord, that you would give us that again. That through your presence and through us hearing your word, you may then give us the courage to go out and 
and not just hear, but do as you command. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so then in response to that, in this part of your act of education, in this congregation, your tithes and your offerings will now be received. And once the offering is being received and comes forward, uh, Ian will begin playing the doxology. I would ask that you stand and sing the doxology. Okay.
about our thanksgiving and our invitation. During this time of prayer, we're going to be saying the Lord's Prayer in, in Gaelic and in English. I suspect that for those of you who can speak Gaelic, you'll be able to join in. And for those of you who speak English, you nice of you, can join in with me and we then join together and say the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this holy day. A day filled with celebration. A celebration of our heritage. A celebration of that which gives us joy and praise. A celebration of that which comes and acknowledges that you have been our God. Both through the good times and the bad times of life. Regardless of our new country of origin. Regardless of our heritage. Each of us has a history which is filled with ups and downs, filled with the need to acknowledge you and your presence. And so we want to give you thanks for that. We want to give you thanks for all the times you have been with us and with our leaders through all the years of our history. But also we want to give you thanks that we may come to you today and offer to you our prayers of intercession, our prayers bringing to you the concerns around us. Today we want to bring you particularly the concerns of Scotland. Yes, Scotland has decided to again be have its own parliament, have its own understanding of itself and of its nationhood. Lord God, now we ask that you would bring your wisdom to those leaders who would be elected, to those people who would be put into those positions of authority in Scotland. Thank you for those who are currently now, people who acknowledge them. We acknowledge all the leaders of the clans and the different houses. We are praying for each of them that they too may hear your word and do it. But though we pray not only for stuff, we pray for this country, for strength. We pray, Lord, that you may give us again a new sense of vision and purpose. One in which we may be united as a country, regardless of our heritage, regardless of our background. One in which we may take each other's differences with respect and honor. We may also then emphasize above that our unity together as a nation. We may be proud of each other. We are here. And that we may show our love to each other. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us in all the aspects of life. That you would give us your praise and your love. And so, Lord, we then pray to you the prayer that you taught us. Arnakir, a ta in air, Gunubika tenor, Hikug do Riaga, Jenna do Foyer, Erantar, Marani here in air, Tavera Gubin and Jew, Arnaran Lahir, Agas Mai Gubin. Arthiata, Abul Abaius Shina da Lukthia, Agas Nalek Anam Buar Shi, Ak Sula Shin Oh, Oris Liatsa and Riagat, Agas and Kuvat, Agas Aglava Gushiori. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
This is the curtain prayer. God our Father, we praise and thank you for your goodness to us in our Scottish heritage. We dedicate to you our tartans, the symbols of unwavering loyalty, steadfast hope, and the great achievements of our Scottish forebears. We praise and thank you today for the rapid individualism the respect for law and order, the hate of camp and hypocrisy, the regard for human personality, and the belief in the equality of all men and women, women before you. That was so important in the lives of our poor people. Today we praise that we, their descendants in Australia, may remain true to these great ideas. We praise that we may be true to the faith handed down to us, a faith which has played such a great part in the building of our country Australia. May we and our fellow Scots everywhere help to bring peace, goodwill, equality and justice to our world. make a colourful sight. A wonderful image. And so we're going to come then to uh, the close of the service. And we're going to close with a with a hymn I think is very appropriate in terms of what I preach. Say that we may need to hear the word of God. Go and do it, knowing that God will be with us. And so let's close the service and we sing the hymn, Be Thou My Dear. <laughs> let's stand and sing together.
a team who served in the vestibule just around you on the inside of our Hall of Memories. And so you'd be most welcome to come and have something to drink before you go off and uh, face the day. I realize that some of the Scottish people need to go off to go and do their marching, but you know, they might go and fit in a cup of tea before then, just to make sure we've got enough energy to go march. But it's good for you to come and to celebrate together on this quick little time. And so I pray that we may all come together and celebrate that as we go from this place. And so then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, and remain with you this day and forevermore.
well up and away, and then I think six or three or four months nearly. <laughs> so, oh, five and eight. Have you considered that? Hibernating. I think it's good, but I can. Well, that's what happened from the other day. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I had plenty of left either. Oh, right. You had something before you went there, didn't you? Well, the, the answer is I can. Yeah. 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 When did you really get back? Uh, August. Yeah. 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 I got back August. And as soon as I came back, I got sick. Anyhow, the, the, the first thing is to. Um, that's what I thought at first. Is that I had it after six weeks, it was still not gone. Once that's done. done. And then, then I went to the doctor and they took a blood test and they found out that it was glandular fever. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, you well, say you've got a scan. Well, the funny thing is, um, I, I can actually get my brother to, to grab a, a scan of it straight on the computer. So once you take a scan, you need to have a bit back or something, do you? Any idea what the bed is like to get to see? So really, I'll just do a selection of the old Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, see, the yes. funny thing is, uh, it's better for me to, to miss the scanning level. I can. Um, I can. I watched the first part and was so disgusted. <laughs> there's a way of getting the image straight off the video on the computer without the scanning. But I mean, I work so, I work that way. And I said, I know that I can do it. What's the best way? I mean, that's what they're doing. So it's good that they know that they're open about what they're doing. But <laughs> All right. I was hoping okay. that they're open about what they're doing. I'll have a look. 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 i Yes, getting good again. Really? <laughs> yeah, getting out of the dark hole. Like I was sick for too long. Too long. Oh, really? Didn't realise. Yeah, that's why well, I never could come. Oh, no, really? Yeah, it's it's good anyway, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, uh, this should have. Yeah, I came back from. Town, like so I was away for four or five months yeah. in Germany, yeah. and as soon as I came back, I was sick, so I never came back. What about our talking to each other? At least not at the moment. Yes, we're picking it up even as we speak. Because it's still going. No, you can't. You don't remember every name. Good to have a fly on, Yes, you sure are. Your parents are here, so it's much easier to remember your name. Thanks, Carmen. You should think of a name, Carmen. Can't you mute it? Can you mute it? No, I can't mute it.
Yeah, well, that's good to see, mate. I'm, just, I'm going my way to work for a second. Oh, right. Okay. Um, well. Yeah, well, that's a pretty successful day then. Yeah. Morning. It's uh, nice to see the old church packed. Mm. Maybe upstairs. Yeah. It's the first time I've seen people up there. Yeah. Actually, I might get out the front way so I can quickly say goodbye to Martin. Okay, I'll see, see you later, Adrian. Good, good see you later. Get one? Yeah, I've got one. <laughs> yeah, what's this pool? It wow. It is an experience. Full of people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good to see the place packed. I'll just get another of those. 